this video on the quadratic discriminant. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the values a, b, and c in a standard form quadratic equation, and you should be able to plug in the values a, b, and c into the discriminant formula to determine the number and types of solutions. All right, so our discriminant. It's part of a larger formula that we'll be discussing soon related to the quadratic formula. So we have a standard form quadratic formula of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, and we have to remember a, b, and c are real numbers and a will never equal zero, otherwise it's no longer a quadratic formula. The letter a represents the coefficient of the squared terms always. So if I'm talking about a, I'm always talking about the number in front of the squared variable. b always refers to the number in front of the single variable. And c always refers to the constant or the number without the variable. So we have to remember the specific locations of a, b, and c. So when we plug them into our formula, we're sure to use the right numbers. So quadratic equations with real number coefficients, meaning a, b, and c, can have real or non-real, which could also be called imaginary solutions. Okay, and let's remember a solution could also be called a root, it could be called an x-intercept, or it could be called a zero. It's just where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis, as we dis as discussed previously. You can determine the number and type of solutions using the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant refers to the number that we're going to get when we plug a, b, and c into this formula. Okay, so let's take a look at what the discriminant tells us. It tells us the number and type of solutions. So if we plug in a, b, and c into our formula and we get a value of zero for that number, the discriminant is zero, that means there is one real solution. So what one real solution refers to is the quadratic graph, the parabola, touches the x-axis one time. So we could have it opening up this way, or it can be hanging from the x-axis where only that one single point exactly in the center will be touching the x-axis. So if your discriminant is zero, there is one real solution, and meaning there's one place where the graph crosses the x-axis. If we plug in a, b, and c, and we get a number greater than zero, meaning a positive number, that means we're going to have two real solutions, okay? And what that means is your graph is going to cross or touch the x-axis two times. So we can have it opening up, or your graph could be opening down, and as we're just referring to the solutions or where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis, and the discriminant tells us how many times this is going to happen. It's not going to tell us exactly where, just how many times. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, meaning a positive number, that means there's two real solutions or two places where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay. And our third option that can happen with a discriminant is if we plug in a, b, and c, and we get a number less than zero, meaning a negative number, that means we are going to have no real solutions. Or it could also be called two imaginary solutions. Okay, So a solution, that's what we reviewed up here briefly, a solution is the where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis, so the x-intercept or the zero. If the graph never touches 
the x-axis, you can't have any real solutions. So we're going to have imaginary solutions. This will occur when your discriminant is less than zero, meaning a negative number. Um, there are no real solutions. The graph will not cross the x-axis. If the discriminant is less than zero, it will have no real solutions but two imaginary solutions. And we'll learn more about that in Algebra 2. So what you need to know for Algebra 1 is if your graph turns around and does not touch the x-axis, we, we could go at it from this other direction too. If it never touches the x-axis, it's no real solutions or two imaginary solutions. All right, let's flip this over and get, try a couple problems. All right, let's take a look at number one. The first thing you have to be able to do is identify A, B, and C, because remember our discriminant formula is B squared minus four times A times C. We have to be able to identify A, B, and C to plug into the formula. A is always the number next to the squared term, so in this case, A is four. B is always the number next to the single variable, so that's our B. And C is always our constant. So we're going to want to set this up. So for B squared, I'm always going to plug my B into my parentheses. I have 3 squared minus 4, because that's in the formula, times A, which is also 4, times C, which is 2. So I want you to set it up like this each time. And then we're going to take our handy dandy calculators and we're going to put it in just like this. Parenthesis, three close parenthesis and square it, minus four parentheses times A, the parentheses telling the calculate, calculator to multiply, parentheses two. Okay, so this should look just like what we wrote down here. And when we press enter, I got negative 23. So my discriminant is that number. That's your discriminant. Now, how does negative 23 compare to zero? Well, negative 23 is less than zero. And we said if the value is less than zero, or a negative number, that meant there were no real solutions, or you can write two imaginary solutions. Okay. So the number is no or two, and the type is either no real or two imaginary. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. Let's take a look at number three this time. So first we have to identify A, B, and C. A, remember, is always next to the x squared term, so it's negative 3. B, there's not a number there, but it's an understood 1. So B is actually negative 1. And C is always our constant, so our C in this case is 9. So I'm going to plug everything into our formula. So I have B squared minus 4 times A times C. Okay, so we're going to put that in our calculator. Parenthesis, negative 1, and then hit the squared button. Minus 4 times a negative 3. And so when you do this, you have to use negative 3. You've got to use that negative. Okay, it's not a minus negative 3 times C, which is 9. And here I got a value of 109. 109 is greater than 0. We said if it's a positive number, the, the, if the discriminant of 109 is a positive number, that means it has two real solutions. So we're just identifying A, B, and C and plugging them into the formula to determine how many times does the graph cross or touch the x-axis. Let's take a look at number 9. So number 9, we have an A value. It's that understood 1. So my A is 1. B is 14. And C is 49. So we're going to plug them in. So we have... B squared 
minus 4 times a times c. Okay, so we'll plug them into our calculator. b squared minus 4 times a times c. And I'll press enter and I got 0. 0 this time. Well, 0 is equal to 0 because we want to compare it to 0. If our discriminant was 0, that meant we had one real solution. Okay, so let me show you why this is. If we were to factor this, we did solving by factoring previously, this would factor down to x plus 7 times x plus 7. And to solve by factoring, you take each factor and set it equal to 0. And then we're going to solve them. But if you notice, the factors are exactly the same. So what that means is when I solve it, I end up getting the same solution. This graph only touches the x-axis at negative 7. I don't, so it only touches one time. That's why it's one real solution, because the factors were identical. All right, one more. It's a different, slightly different situation that can occur. Let's take a look at number 10. Our A value is at understood 1. B is always next to the single variable, and there is no single variable here. So our B value is actually 0, because there isn't a B and c is going to be the negative 25 because c is always the um, constant. Okay, negative 25 is our constant. So we have b squared minus 4 times a times c. When I put that into my calculator, I got 100, which is greater than 0 which means I have two real solutions. Okay. All right. Let's look at tw uh, number 12. Okay, so number 12 is a little bit different. 12 says there's the x squared, so that means a is 4. That is a single x, so that means that's actually b. And there is no C term, so C equals 0. If it's just not there, it's going to be equal to 0. So when we plug this one in, you end up with B squared minus 4 times A times C. When I put that all into my calculator, I ended up with just a 9 because this zero is going to wipe out this whole right side here, and so we really only have three squared. So nine, which is greater than zero, which means we have two real solutions. All right, so hopefully that was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class. Thank you.